Hi folks, this is Joe, the Rogers Arkansas Gardener. Uh, going to plant my tomato plants today. I've got uh, four varieties, uh, as well as one husky cherry tomato plant. Uh, I'll be planting those today. Uh, before I do that, there's a few things I do to prayer, uh, prepare for that. And one of them is I take tar paper and I'll cut it in six inch wide strips. And it's 36, the roll is 36 inches wide. So it's 36 by six. You roll that into a circle, put that around your tomato plants and it does three things for you. It, it eliminates your cutworms from getting the, into your uh, uh, plant and you know, cutworms go around the tomato plant and then they'll basically kill it and then it'll drop to the ground just deader than a doornail. The other thing that it does is the wind gets pretty high in the springtime and those little plants in the ground can get beat up really bad. Well, this helps protect them from getting beat up so bad, which is beneficial to them. The third and probably one of the most important things is that when you get, uh, we're still gonna be getting some cool nights, but warm days and that black tar paper, black absorbs heat. That black tar paper around those tomato plants, that will take and pull that heat in and inside that circle, you can put a thermometer inside and outside and it'll be several degrees warmer inside that circle. And what that allows for you to do is you can get your tomato plants in a little sooner than a lot of people on most years anyway. And an old man taught me this years ago. I've been doing it ever since and it works really, really well. So, but anyway, I wanna show you what I've got going here. And I'll take this and I'll take my razor blade and all I'm doing is just cutting these. They don't have to be perfect. None of this has to be. And you just roll this up and put that into the ground right around that tomato plant to help protect that tomato plant. And I'll cut nine of these and that will give me enough to go around my tomato plants. Hi folks, this is Joe uh, Rogers, Arkansas Gardener again. Uh, I'm just gonna go through, kind of show what my, where my garden's at. Uh, I put all the stuff that's in the garden in on March 4th and March 6th. Uh, I've got some videos. Uh, I'm one behind on a video. I've had a hard time trying to learn how to put this stuff in, but I'm going to be planting tomatoes and stuff today. And I'll, after I get through with it, I'll show you you know, what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. I've got, I plant marigolds in between all my tomato plants and that keeps the aphids off. I never would have believed it, but it works because um, I had them several years ago real bad and I didn't put marigolds in the garden. Uh, after that, I started putting marigolds in between them and I've never had them since. So uh, to me, that tells me it works. But anyway, I'll be doing that and I'm planting all my herbs. I've got uh, rosemary, uh, basil, thyme, uh, oregano, uh, oregano and sage that I'll be putting in as well uh, but I'm going to kind of just walk around and show you what we've got so far and what looks like right now let's just start on this side this is my garlic the one that I planted from Walmart that they put the stuff on it to keep the roots from growing well after it's set in the ground long enough with water on it I'd say it worked pretty good but anyway, that's one variety of garlic. Here's my other. And I also planted my asparagus. Not all of it has popped up, but some of it has popped up really well. I mean, you can see it's got, it's getting on up here. It's got a bunch of, quite a few spots of it. And then the other thing is, is down here on this end, there's no asparagus other than one little spear that's popped up. And what that tells me, it's a different variety. This is a different variety on this end, and maybe it's just going to take longer. I uh, don't know for sure on that. Uh, I've never planted that particular variety, but now you can see this is my uh, broccoli plants, and they're doing real well. It won't be much longer before they start to head, and then uh, there's cabbage, and then cauliflower. And then Brussels sprouts down here on the end, and they're all doing really, really well, uh, which doesn't really shock me a whole lot, but that's, I just knew that they would do well here. And then here's my onions. These are the big onions. These will be the, uh, the red, the white, and the purple onions. And they're, they're starting to get a little size on them now. And if you look, you can see the little squigglies. Those little squigglies, like that, those right there, 
that's your salad onions. All these little squigglies are salad onions. And those, those will keep going and, until you get, you know, they'll eventually get big enough where you can uh, start munching on those. Now this is lettuce, black seeded Simpson right there, and then butter crunch right there. I had a, a issue with the chats, which is, I think it's a migratory bird, and they came in and ate all the seed. You can see a couple that they missed is the bigger pieces you see there. And then I just replanted and it popped right on up. And that's some spinach that it that's some I think that seed was a little older and that's why it didn't come in as well as it should have. But now this spinach just went crazy. Now here's my carrots. These are the little baby carrots. And man, have they come in with a vengeance. And those those did real well. And then down here, these are my beets. I, in my other video I showed you they were just barely starting to show some color coming out of the ground and now they're just as thick as they can be and doing real well and now this is greens I'm not sure if it's collards or if it's mustard I'm not sure which is which but the, the, this is one and here's the other this is another one where they, the seed didn't come in real thick I don't know why but that's something you learn every year something's always a little different but you can see the radishes they're just absolutely going nuts. We're going to have some for supper tonight uh, to go along with some grilled chicken. But anyway, that's three different kinds of radishes there, and they're all doing really, really well. And then here, here is my uh, bed, uh, bed down through here. You can see it down the length of the garden there. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to set the camera up and I'm going to show you how I plant my tomatoes and what I'm doing here and why I do it. It's a little bit different. I uh, use that tar paper around it and it, it just, you know, it, it keeps the cutworms off. It helps protect them from the high winds and it warms that soil up and makes the roots grow, grow much faster. But that's the whole purpose of doing that. And uh, I'm only planting nine tomato plants this year. One's a husky cherry tomato, and then my marigolds go between each plant. You can see kind of how I've got them laid out. There's a marigold tomato plant, marigold tomato plant, and I just alternate them. That way I've got marigolds scattered in among them all the way, and I, it, it eliminates having an aphid issue. And there's my sage and uh, basil and... Uh, oregano uh, thyme and rosemary but anyway i'll go set that up and i'll get those in the ground and show you what i do hey folks rogers arkansas gardener again uh i've got my rose set up i've got my tar paper laid out here one of the other things that i do when i plant my tomatoes is i take a scoop for each tomato plant and put it in my wheelbarrow and then i add a uh, miracle Grow potting mix some epsom salts and some sugar to it the sugar feeds the good enzymes that helps protect your roots on your plants and then the um, epsom salts adds the calcium back into the soil and a little miracle Grow potting mix just kind of gives them a shot out of the ground uh, between that and the heats generated by the tar paper you'd be amazed how fast these things are going to grow it's pretty interesting to see how it, how it does but uh, i'll show you what i'm doing pulling a scoop out See if I can get this lined out here. Okay. And there we go. Now, I'm just gonna scoop this out and I'll just take wherever my tomato plant is gonna be and I'll just take it right under my rope, my string, and I wanna take it and get a good scoop of dirt out and put that in my wheelbarrow. Then I'm gonna go down here and do the same thing at the next tomato plant. And I've already got them spaced the way I want them. And I'll do that for each one of them. As I do that for each tomato plant, and then I, when I get done, then I'll just take and put uh, basically a, about a big healthy handful of potting mix and just a couple of good handfuls of sugar and uh, the same of the uh, Epsom salts and I'll put it in there with that dirt and I'll mix it all together and then I'll go back and I'll spread it in each one of these holes and I'll just try to give it an even amount down through there for each plant and I don't do that with the marigolds I just strictly do that with the tomatoes 
Uh, but that's just one of the things an old man taught me one time. And ever since then, I've had such healthy tomatoes, so big, uh, produce a lot of tomatoes. And something about tomatoes, a lot of people don't realize that if you have a, several hot, calm days, or, or not hot, but if they're below 90, they, they'll set fruit. But the thing about tomato plants is it takes movement to pollinate tomato plants. It does not take bees. Bees are irrelevant to a tomato plant. But one thing that he told me that he used to do, and I've done it for years now, is on a calm day and it's below 90, you know they should set fruit. If you'll go out there in the morning, once in the morning, just walk right down the road and just grab those tomato cages and just shake the fool out of them. And if you'll do that, you'll have so many tomatoes, you don't, will literally just, it's mind boggling. But I've done that for years and I always have so many, I don't know what to do with them all. But anyway, but that's just another little tip that the old man taught me years ago. Uh, but I'm going to shut this off and I, and I will get it set up here and, and uh, get all that mix put in. And then I'll come back and show you what I'm doing with this uh, tar paper around the tomatoes and how I set it in. All right, folks, back again. Uh, just give you a quick look. I'm going to show you what my wheelbarrow looks like. I've added the sugar to it. There, get my shadow out of the way. That'd be good. But I just added that sugar to it. And then now, I'll take, and this is, this is the Epsom salts, and I'll put just basically a couple of cups or so, like that, and mix it in. A two, two cups, two and a half, I don't know, not a, there's no set amount, but uh, that's basically putting calcium back into your soil is what you're doing with the Epsom salts. All right, and now, I'll take my miracle Grow potting mix, and for each plant, I've got nine plants, so I'll usually take just a good double handful for every plant. There's one, two, three. And then I will come back and shoot another video on how I do it and put the tar paper around them. All right, folks. What we're gonna do now, like it, I put that dirt back in there, you can see how pretty that looks. Now I wanna take this, and I want to get that. This, this is no different than the other plants that I planted, the uh, broccoli and stuff. It's coming out, you can see how tight that is. Well, I wanna break that up a little bit. And all I wanna do, take a little marker and just leave it in there. Just kinda of mush that up a little bit. Kinda of tear that root ball up just a little bit, and I wanna take it, and I wanna get that down I want to get that down and that the tomato plants if you put them a little deeper that's okay because anything below that ground you're going to find that anything below that ground is going to turn into roots and now here's what i was talking about with the tar paper i'll make a circle around this plant here's the deal this is the money maker right here i want to do that and all i'm doing is taking that tar paper up and i'm rolling that up and making a roll to go right around that plant I said, well, you won't get no sun. Yes, you're gonna get sun. But here's the deal. You pull that dirt in, just like that, on all sides, like that. Now, the other thing I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna put a little dirt around that inside. You can kind of make like a little lip. And let me show you why you're doing that here in just a second. And you get a little dirt on the plant, it don't matter, you're gonna wet this here in just a minute anyway. And I'm gonna show you why. And you want to water this gently because what you're wanting that do to do is you want this dirt, you want this to harden and create a crust, and that will hold that tar paper in place. Those uh, cutworms won't come in. The wind goes over it and doesn't beat them up. And inside this circle, it, that temperature will get so much warmer, several degrees. But it makes the roots grow faster. Is what it does. Let me show you how I water that in real gentle. And I'm going to take my, my water can and I just want to wet that really good on that outside, all the way around that outside. And I'm going to do it on this side it's real good, like that right there. Now, here's what you, you really do. You really get it wet on the middle. I mean, water it good. You're not going to hurt it. With this soil, it's going to drain real well. And you put up about, you know, you, you can put about as much water as you want because it's going to drain well, but what it does, it waters it in really good and lets those roots uh, acclimate quickly. 
like that. And you'll see that, that that water will just literally just sponge right down into that, that uh, area where that tomato plant's at. Thank you.